the central part of the day. All the best ready and see you further down the lock. Uh, W2FD, stop me 3-1-8. Hey, take care, Mark. W2FD, clear. Kilo 73, Victor, 3 one Mike Alpha. November 5, Yankee, India, Zulu. Yeah, Zulu. November 5, Yankee, Italy, Zulu. Oh, 5, Yankee, India, Zulu, 59. 5-9, Texas Mobile, thank you. Have a safe drive from Victor 3 1 Mike out. That was a little clip of a contact I made uh, yesterday. And what was happening in that video is I was standing on the beach with my UHF handheld. It's on 440. And I was crossbanding from this radio, which was being received in the truck on this radio, and being crossbanded to the 7300, if that makes sense. I think most people understand crossbanding, but maybe some don't. And then, of course, any signal coming in on 10 meters would be crossbanded back to the UHF radio. Um, I'll just give you a quick demo. It's on, you know, we're on 10 meter simplex there. Again, we're on UHF over here. If I key the radio, well, it's gonna tune first because it wasn't in tune, but so now when I key this, it's gonna be received over here. N5YZ testing and retransmit it over here. N5YZ testing. And then of course coming back the other way on 10 meters. I can't really demonstrate that good because I don't have anybody on 10 meters, but I can break the squelch and show you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the squelch here and you'll see it come through over here. So it's really that easy. And the secret, well, the secret's on the wiring, but uh, more specifically the cable, but Here's the UHF radio, it's mounted under the seat. And what I've done is I've come in, I've added your standard 9600 baud port, six pin den, mini den. And then the same thing on the 7300 through the 13 pin accessory port on the back. So that's done and then this, what makes it all work is this cable. It's not just a straight through patch cable. Well, it's a patch cable, but it's not straight through. It's been cut and spliced and crossed over basically. So you've got the push to talk line and the cost swapped on each radio and then audio in and out swapped on each radio. So they're crossed over. So anytime this cable's plugged in, they're automatically crossing over. That's basically how it works. So we'll go inside and I'll fire up the computer and I'll show you more details. Okay, here's uh, what we're gonna do now. We're gonna have a look at uh, some radios here. Uh, the ultimate goal is to get uh, all the radios sharing uh, the common data for it. It's basically how I do mine. We want all of them to be ultimately terminated with a 9600 baud port. It just makes it easier. You can do it other ways. You can use DB9s, you know, use the jacks there on the back of uh, you know, Yezu's different. They've got, I think, 10 pin. But, uh, you know, I think it's just easier if everybody gets on the same page and use the good old 9600 baud uh, connector. Um, it's kind of the Anderson power pole of the data connectors. But just to give you an example of uh, some additions or adding them to radios that don't have factory ports. Let's see that one for a second. But uh, here's a Kenwood. Let's do this one first. Here's one of the first radios I had. This is a Kenwood uh, TM271. You can see it's had the port added to it. This one's very easy to add to because once you take the cover off, the board is populated with uh, solder pads and all you have to do is solder the, the five wires, uh, the corresponding wires out of the plug onto it and uh, it's just right there. It's almost like it, well, it was. It was made for that. So that's a good radio to uh, use. This one's obviously VHF. And that's, that one was the predecessor to this one. This is a TM281. Now it looks the same, um, but I, I've added the port to, the, to this one also, but I can tell you that it's very involved. Um, in fact, I would say it's just not even worth it. Uh, it's just too much work. I did it, but it's just, I wouldn't do it again. Uh, commercial radio, here's a 
there's an ICF 6011. This is a UHF model, eight channel commercial radio. The 5011 would be the VHF. And you can see this one has it added. And there's a header inside here with the out with the uh, the various pins. I think this one's a 15 pin header inside this radio. And you just have to find the appropriate wires and connect them here. And uh, here's a an ICOM 221. And this has a factory data port added to it. You know, it plugs into the same header, kind of like this the 6011, but uh, ICOM terminates theirs in DB9s. But, you know, you could always have another uh, conversion and go from here to the 9600. But uh, just some examples. I mean, you know, if everybody gets on the same page with those ports and, you know, generally with those five connections, the out of the out of that port you can do most stuff add a TNC or do packet or whatever you're gonna do um, as far as the HF side the ICOM side this is very easy uh, most of the ICOM radios come with that 13 pin pigtail in the accessory pack in fact that's what I was gonna show here this is a box that hadn't even been opened with my 7300 because I don't use anything out of it so I'm curious to see what's in here. I hope that kind of fits in here. I'm sure it is. Yeah, right on top. This. That's what you need right there. And you can see all the all the wires are color coded. That's pretty much standard across the ICOMs. Stuff in there. But, uh, yeah, that. Uh, you'll need that. Or, as an alternative, if you don't have that pigtail, you can. Uh, Go on Amazon and buy one of these um, 13 pin straight through cables. So it's got 13 pins on each end. And just cut it. Then you have two. These are pretty nice. You know, it's you know, you can buy just the plugs and then try to solder, you know, to the 13 pins, but they're hard to solder to. And you know, this factory cable is already molded and it's you know the strain relief's really good on it. So that's an alternative. And then you know, in order to make these cables up, you're going to have to have some. You know, they're basically PS2 mouse cables, what they are. But this one I bought, you can see that it's got uh, the jack on one side, on the female, and then the male on the other. And so you would use, you know, this this side to make. Well, I guess you really can't, but uh, you would need a cable like this, a straight through cable. To do the crossover with, and then you're going to need one of these, one of these plugs, to make this. So let's jump over to the computer. And we'll show how to wire it up real quickly here. First, we're going to show how to wire up the uh, HF side on the uh, 7300 or others. This will work on anything with the 13-pin plug, or it should. I know it works on the 7200. But uh, okay, you've got your. This is from the manual, obviously, and you'll see over here on the on the left you've got this diagram and I just went ahead and color coded it to make it a little easier but the uh, colors are uh, labeled down here at the bottom anyway so the only pins we're going to be concerned about are pin 2, 3, 11, 12, and 13 just those five pins um, you don't need to worry about any of the other ones right now and then of course we're trying to get that plug uh, converted into the six pin DIN the 9600 baud style so um, let's take a look at the six pin side and then we'll connect it to corresponding on the ICOM side. So we got six pins over here, starting with pin number one where it says TX audio. That's TX audio into the radio. So we're going to go and we're going to connect that to pin 11 on the uh, 13 pin side, which is the pink, pink wire in your accessory kit that came with the radio. Uh, moving on to pin 2, it's ground, that's going to be pin 2 on the ICOM side, which is red. So you'll connect pin 2 to the red wire on the accessory connector. Uh, let's see, pin 3 is push to talk, and that is going to be corresponds to send, where it says send. In the 13 pin side, it's number 3 over there, so that will be the orange wire. So the orange wire will connect to the push to talk. Pin 4 is discriminator out. And we will connect that to pin 12 on the ICOM side, which is light blue. 
So the light blue connects to pin four. And final, we're not gonna worry about pin five, that's uh, speaker audio, don't worry about that. And finally, um, the last one is squelch. And it's, it's a squelch out on the uh, ICOM side too, which is pin number 13. It's the one that's up here all by itself, it's green. So that takes care of that. That's how you make the little pigtail going from the 13 pin ICOM to the uh, six pin den, standard six pin den. And then that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna assume that you've already done the same on the your link radio side, whatever you're using for that, your 220 radio, your UHF, VHF. Um, uh, you can use, you could potentially even use a 9700. Um, 9700 has an accessory to be a little different wiring, but uh, you could do that too. But anyway, let's just assume that now that the, uh, the HF side, the ICOM side is, uh, we now have a port that looks, you know, like this. And then let's open up another one here and this will be our, let's say this is our, our link radio, whatever we're using, let's say a UHF radio at this, just for demonstration purposes. Okay. You're going to need to build a crossover cable. So now we have uh, just a standard output on both sides. Nothing's crossed over yet, but uh, and this is the easy part. So you get uh, a male-to-male -male uh, straight-through wire, cut it in half, and then you'll repin it to, um, as follows. What we want to do is we want to uh, tie the two. Let's let's tie the two uh, ground wires together. So pin two and pin two, just wire those straight through like they were before. So that takes care of pin two. Don't worry about pin five. We're not gonna worry about that. And then we've got two we wanna cross over, two sets of wires. So where it says uh, 9600 baud on one side, well, we wanna cross over the four and one, and we wanna cross over the six and three. So we wanna cable with those two wires uh, crossed over basically. So what'll happen is your key or, or, or the, the squelch will open, let's say, for instance, on the ICOM side. Well, it will go low and then pull uh, the push to talk uh, closed on the link radio side and vice versa. So that takes care of the key, keying part of the circuit. And then, of course, the audio wires are crossed over. The out is in and the in is out. That's basically how that works. So, real simple. The long and short of it is you've got a straight through. Uh, six pin cable, uh, ex extension cable with two male plugs on the end, cut it in half, connect the two crowns together, two and two, don't worry about pin five, and just cross over pins four and one, and six and three, and that's it, you're done. And that's it, that's how you get it done. And pretty much the stock settings that I've found on the 7300 work, the only change you need to make is you need to make sure your automatic uh, gain control is on fast. Um, if it's any, uh, if it's on medium or, or slow, it uh, tends to hang, not hang, but it just leaves the, uh, the link radio side open longer. So it needs to switch fast, as fast as it can. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, certainly not hard. Uh, let's see, I was gonna show you something else. Well, ultimately, let me show you. This is, this is ultimately what you wanna end up with. This is showing the, showing it crossed over. So in other words, you'll see that the the um, pin 13, which is our squelch, which is our, essentially our COS, it's up here in green. Well, it's now connected to the push to talk on the other radio. So this is this is kind of showing the crossover. I don't want to confuse somebody, but uh, you know this is this what I'm showing on the screen now is it crossed over. In other words, you can see your grounds, ground to ground, um, and the audio is also crossed over. So the, the output here is now going to the input here and vice versa. So I think if you just look at that, that for a second, you'll understand. But uh, it's, not hard, it's not hard to do at all. And uh, that's about it. That's all I was gonna show that, you know, Yezu has a factory cable. The CT-164, which goes from their 10 pin and converts it to a six pin, like we're talking about, and it's about 30 bucks. You know, it sounds expensive. I don't know, it's kind of a nice cable. Um, like I said, it's strain relieved over here. You don't have to worry about anything pulling apart. If you're not good at soldering, I wouldn't do it, but, uh, you know, maybe somebody would. But uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, I don't want to go too much detail, I guess. If you have any questions, just ask. Um, there's a lot to it, and I don't know where 
people's technical levels are. So I guess we'll end it there. Uh, good luck and uh, you know, be careful. Don't, uh, don't screw anything up. Kind of what I mean by that is, um, has it TRX Labs? The guy's YouTube channel where he fixes the radios. He literally just had a radio that came in, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that somebody had uh, tried to wire up an external keying circuit for an amplifier and they had got these wires crossed in here, this 13.8 volts, because there's 13.8 volts on pin 8. Be very careful with pin 8. Uh, make sure you don't ground that out or anything because he had a radio and it <laughs> fried some traces off the, off the board. So, you know, be careful. Just do, do the stuff at your own risk. It's, it's not hard, but you got to pay attention to what you're doing. And there's 13 volts here and there's 8 volts here. I'm not so sure the 8 volts is there unless you do a slight modification to the radio. Some other radios you have to uh, solder a jumper in the, in the internal to uh, get the 8 volts to come out. But uh, be careful and uh, like I said, good luck.